You know the mob had muscle. Turns out they had delicate hands, too. The skilled and sometimes sneaky hands of Bernie Sindler. I was an expert card manipulator. At a very early age, I did impossible things. He used those skills to hustle card games as a teenager in Baltimore until doctors told the charismatic Jewish kid who suffered from severe asthma he had to move south if he wanted to keep breathing. So in the winter of 1944, he got a one-way ticket to Miami for a train ride that would alter the course of his life. Guy says to me, hey kid, and I'm doing all this kind of sleight of hand. And he says, that's pretty good. Can you, can you show us some tricks? The man sitting in the seat right next to him was the godfather of the Jewish mafia. My name is Meyer. And it's, it's over there, this is Benny. Virginia. This is Meyer Lansky, Bugsy Siegel. Virginia Hill. And you just happen to sit next to them on the train. At just 20 years old, Bernie Sindler became as connected as they come. He said, show him a card trick. Everybody show him a card trick. So I show him a card trick. Next thing you know, these guys, they give me $5, $3. In those days, that was a lot of money. And the money was about to get even better. Lansky's favorite hands are about to become his eyes and ears in Las Vegas tracking Benjamin Bugsy Siegel as he spends millions in mob money building the Flamingo. Benny's there every day working like a dog with Virginia Hill. Working and spending. The original $1 million estimate to build the Flamingo spirals to $6 million, forcing Bugsy to open the casino before the hotel was even finished to try to get money flowing the other direction. But Lady Luck was not on his side on that Christmas day in 1946. Worst weather in the history of Vegas. Raining like crazy. Raining like crazy. They got, I think, six planes chartered from L.A. Can't take off. Bugsy shut down the casino a couple of weeks later. And this is when the folklore about who killed Bugsy Siegel six months later begins to build, a murder Bernie says he knows to his core was not a mob hit. See, Siegel reopened the Flamingo three and a half months before his murder, and those were very good months for the mob and its money. The place is packed. Now, I know they're stealing so much money they can't even tell it. So the bosses are happy, but someone else is mad at Bugsy Siegel for beating up his girlfriend, Virginia Hill. And I see Virginia talking to a soldier. And uh, I walk over, yeah, hi Virginia, and they're, they're kind of talking loud. The soldier turns out to be Virginia Hill's brother, a sharpshooter in the Marines stationed at Camp Pendleton in California. And he says, I'm gonna kill that son of a beating up his sister. On June 20th, 1947, Bugsy takes a trip to Los Angeles to stay in Virginia's house and never makes it back. She's in Paris at the time, hiding from her boyfriend's rage and abuse. As Siegel sat on a couch in front of a big bay window, bullets fired from a military carbine rifle shatter the glass and riddle Siegel's head and torso. I knew the brother did it. I could... It did, nothing else made sense. Aside from the military murder weapon and that threat from Virginia's brother Bernie overheard, a sniper shot through a window was not the mob's M.O. for murder. By shooting through a window, you might just miss a little bit. So the way they did it, they would get you in a car and shoot you in the back of the head. One to the back of the head. <laughs> yeah. you, you don't miss. And they didn't have to worry about the guy waking up and talking. I'm telling you the stories that nobody ever heard of. And Bernie's got plenty of them. Meyer Lansky sent him to Las Vegas to be his eyes and ears as Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo, spending millions more than the mob bosses expected. But Bernie swears the Hollywood version of Bugsy's murder that the mob rubbed him out for overspending is not true. He's convinced his girlfriend, Virginia Hill's protective brother, pulled the trigger as payback for beating her. Virginia, at this time, was living in Paris. She was afraid to come home because she, was, she became physically afraid of, of Benjamin. 
And make no mistake, Bernie knew the mafia was capable of extreme violence, and he was on the mob's payroll. Not a paycheck. They would take, like everything else, they reach into the rack and take money. <laughs> I knew it a long time ago who they really were. Did it scare you? No, I loved it. In fact, to me, it seemed like it was very glamorous for me. You're never worried that when you're going to cross the wrong person, you're going to get one to the back of the head? No. Why not? I knew all these people. No bullet ever found its mark on Bernie, but Cupid's arrow? That's another story. His way with the ladies led to seven marriages. He made good money as a top casino dealer and VIP host, but his fortunes really changed when he fell for the wife of a big-time gambler at the Flamingo. The whale of whales for Las Vegas. Stop it for a second. Her husband is the biggest whale. The biggest. David Paper at the Flamingo. Yeah. And you're making time with his wife. Yeah. I couldn't help myself. If something takes control, forget about it. Guys get murdered for this. Bernie didn't, but during a steady stream of torrid love letters from his married mistress, her whale of a husband dropped dead. How did he get dead? He died. <laughs> when you read my letters, you start to wonder. The wealthy widow quickly became the next Mrs. Sindler, which meant he didn't have to work in the casinos anymore. He could help build them. So you go from eight dollars a day yeah. dealing craps downtown to now you're an investor with Meyer Land. Yeah, I got and now I'm the investor. That new role brought new problems. The feds were cracking down on the mafia in Las Vegas. When you're dealing with the FBI, believe me, no matter how smart you think they are, they're smarter. He knew enough to give them just enough, always making sure his mobbed up partners knew he was no rat, even though he was being friendly with the feds. They want to see shows. I had the position. It was, it was amazing. I could get anybody comped anywhere in the city. Comps were the currency Bernie used whenever he needed a favor, like the time a wealthy socialite asked for help tracking down her stolen diamond ring. The only call to make in those days was to mob enforcer Tony Spilatro. I called Tony, and I, was a, I, I did a lot of favors for him, free rooms, uh, the works, like I did for everybody else, if I liked them. And he did a lot of favors for me. Spilatro came through. The ring came back. Nobody asked how. Even the house Bernie is sitting in for this interview has a notorious backstory. A triple murder on Rancho Circle on a bloody Sunday in 1984. It's been some life, all because of a chance meeting on a train more than 70 years ago when mob boss Meyer Lansky was drawn to his impressive card skills, infectious personality, and that sly smile. And there's something else, a fact few know. Lansky had a disabled son he kept hidden out of shame, a son whose name just happened to be Bernard. And because my name was the same as his, somehow or other, I think he saw me as an image of what he liked his son to be. You were literally like a son. Yeah, yeah I was like a son to mine.